Okay, you guys, we're coming at you with another how-to video um, on the travel trailer remodel. Um, we haven't gotten much done since the roof, but it is winter and it's cold. And um, unfortunately, we're having furnace issues. So I'm going to do a little walkthrough on you on, on some of the troubleshooting I did. Um, so again, this is a 1997 Wildwood T26, um, and it's got the Suburban sf30 rv furnace unit um and so i did some tinkering got it to work but still having some issues so i'm going to tell you what what i think is still wrong and then uh go through what i'm currently doing to fix it so check this out okay so this is the unit and uh it is it's frustrating first of all because in this model they didn't build a exterior access for this Unfortunately, you have to slide it out from underneath the stove, which wouldn't be too much trouble if it wasn't for the hack fact that this hole that they cut out is not lined up with the box. So you also, so this unit slides in and out of that box in there, as you can, if you can see. So there's the exhaust holes and the cords and the water heaters back over there. Um, and this box, is supposed to be stationary and then this unit slides in and out of the box with just one screw however because the hole is not directly in front of the box the unit has to slide at an angle therefore the box has to shift to do so um so there's one screw in front right here and that's what holds this inside of the box um and the box has two screws holding it to the floor um so in order to get the unit out of the box, hopefully your situation is a little bit better than mine, because obviously this is the front. So there's not really anything you can access besides the high limit uh, switch and the, the gas feed. Everything else is on the rear of the unit. As you can see, it's a Suburban SF30. Um, so you have to slide it out. So in order to do that, to slide that out of the box, all you have to do is take the vent cover off and then that's two screws and then there's this little cover right here that is just the front cover of the box so you take those two off with four screws and then you undo this screw and you undo the gas uh, hookup obviously make sure that you drain your pro turn off your propane and then drain the lines first so i just drain it i turn on a burner until all the gas is out of the lines um, and then undo this and then this will slide out once you get that out um there's a few components to look at. So this is the control panel, which I'm currently in the middle of replacing. Um, and remembered I should probably record a video. This sits right here, plugged into the wires. And then you have the sail switch, which is on the back. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right here. And you hear it clicking. So you can see the two wires going into it. That it looks like I've got a couple replacements here. It looks like this. So I've got two in here. You can see it's basically this switch is designed to tell you if there's airflow. And there's a couple videos I watch. I, I'll, I'll tag them down in the comments below. Um, some experts on how this system works. Uh, the furnace was working consistently. And then all of a sudden it was not blowing any hot air. And it would turn off. Similar to the cycle it would go through if I didn't have any, if my propane tanks were empty. So what would happen if my propane tanks were empty? I'd turn the furnace on um, and set the temperature higher than whatever it is in the trailer, um, which would send call to the furnace for heat. And then you can hear the fan start to blow. Um, and then it'll do that for about five minutes. And it, for some reason, there's something that shuts it down. Um, it would stop. So I just started doing that out of nowhere. Um, I, I cycled it a couple times. I turned the furnace, the thermostat off and then back on. It'd go through the same process. Um, so what I did was I went back out to the exhaust port and there was no heat coming out of the exhaust port. So I could tell that there was no flame going on and there was also no smell of gas. So I didn't think there was any propane getting to the furnace itself. Um, Apparently the sail switch is a super common problem with these units um, because it's just, it can get dirty and gummed up really easily. Um, 
but I don't think my sail switch was the problem. I'm replacing it anyways because I'm here and they're super cheap. Um, and basically, my problem, I believe, was either the gas valve or the igniter. I just replaced them both because I was right there. Um, and you pretty much got to take one out to get to the other one. Um, now I'm replacing the board and the sail switch. It's pretty much replaced all the components on this thing. Hopefully it works after that. Um, but I'm going to run you guys through a little bit of a, pro of a process of the diagnosis from what I understand. And like I said, there's going to be a couple of videos linked down below that are going to give you maybe a bit more technical understanding from some guys that are a little bit better. This is just my quick, cheap, get the problem fixed as fast as possible version of how I did this. So, like I said, the first thing I noticed was that there was no... There was no heat coming out of the vent, but the fan was still blowing, so the fan was working. But for some reason, we weren't getting any heat coming out, which means there was some problem with the actual heating element. So this basically acts like a radiator. It sucks air in from outside, blows air into the system. The gas is fed in here through a little, um, a little apparatus thing. I don't know what, I know what it's called, but I'm forgetting the word. And then the igniter runs in here and the igniter just basically heats up and you can see it glow in there if you, <laughs> you're able to see that when it's running. Um, and then, so it blows air across that. There's a, a burner here, blows air across that, heats this up, and this right here is a squirrel cage that blows air through this apparatus so the air heats up in between these two panels and then gets pushed down into the vent system, which comes out. So that told me there was no heat going on in here so that's when I bent, went back out and I felt air coming out of the exhaust. So that told me that the import fan, whatever you impeller, whatever you want to call it, was working and blowing air through the system. There just was no flame going on. And I didn't smell propane. If I had smelt propane, that would tell me that the gas is getting into the unit, but it's not getting burned. So there's something wrong with the igniter. But when I went back and I felt the air coming out, there was no smell of propane. So that told me that the gas was not getting to the burner. And most likely that told me that that was the gas valve. But I wanted to make sure because it, it could be the gas valve was bad or it could be that the board was bad or that there was a short in the wiring somewhere. Um, so I did some electrical testing. And basically that the way that this works, let me get these wires hooked back up. That way I can run you through um, how the, the order of firing works. So you go to the, th the thermostat, you turn it on, it calls for heat through this blue wire, right? This red wire is what supplies power. So as long as you have the switch in the on position, if you have the switch in the off position, it's never gonna get the call for heat. If you have the switch in the on position, it gets the call for heat, these two wires in here, all right? This wire then supplies the current to the fan, so the fan will kick on at the same time it'll send a current to this red wire, which goes to the sail switch. So this is your first fail or no, pass or go. If the sail switch is kicked on, that means the air, the fan is blowing, the air is going through the system. It compresses the sail switch, right? Then it's going to allow the current to continue on. This brown wire then comes back underneath into the high limit switch. This is activated if the temperature gets too high. So otherwise this is always a closed circuit. If it overheats and then it'll be an open cir circuit. So this circuit should always be closed. All right, it comes, it passes through here and then the white wire goes back to here. Goes into the blue wire, which returns to the board here. And then it goes through its next circuit, which is the gas circuit, which is the brown and the red wire or the brown and the yellow wire. I'm not sure exactly how that one works. I just know it runs to the gas valve, goes through its process and comes back. So assuming that that circuit is closed, it's going to move on to this one, which is the igniter, which runs this big red wire through here and into here and turns this on. So basically the process goes air, confirmation of air, make sure it's not overheated, gas, igniter, um, which also works as a flame sensor. And then that is the process for making sure that it works. So when I tested mine, I tested the sail switch and basically I manipulated it and it was working correctly. Um, so then I went to the high limit switch and that was closed, constantly closed, no problem. Um, and then I tested the loop for the gas valve and that was working 
and the igniter was also working. Um, so I knew it either had to be the board or it had to be the gas valve. I replaced the gas valve and I replaced the igniter because I was in here anyways. So you gotta get, take this all off. You gotta take off this, the squirrel cage and the impeller just to get to the screws on the gas valve. I found that at Camping World because um, you have to get one with it. On this model, it has the side port. The inlet is on the side and the outlet is on top. Most of them like on Amazon are bottom to top for different models. Um, so I found that at Camping World and then I also just went ahead and replaced the igniter since I was in there. Although it seemed like it was fine, I just wouldn't want to have to get in there again. Um, I got it to I got it to turn on and blow hot air, but it still kicks off after five minutes. So that's telling me that either one, it's not sensing that it's hot, or two, that there's an issue with the board and some circuit isn't completing. So what I'm going to do now is I've already replaced the board. This is the old one, as you can see. So I've already swapped that out for a new one. That one I got on Amazon and I'll link that below. Um, that was $60. And then I'm gonna make sure also that you wanna make sure that your igniter has the proper gap, which we're gonna get into as well. So I've already swapped that out. All the wires are connected. Now we're going to replace the sale switch just cause they're eight bucks. And so I bought two of them. And then we're gonna go ahead and make sure our gapping's correct on here. And then we replace every component on this thing. So after that should be work. Okay, we now have everything put back together and I've replaced the sail switch, which was a pain in the ass. Don't even ask. It's two little itty bitty screws with little like four millimeter nuts maybe that you can't even grab. So now we're gonna test everything before I put the board back, put the unit back in and attach the gas. Just wanna make sure the system's working correctly with the new board. I'm gonna come over here, turn temperatures up, auto, low. We're gonna turn the furnace on. The squirrel fans kicked on. And now we want to make sure there's no gas, so it's obviously not going to start. So you got to look at this angle a little bit from the left side of the furnace assembly, and uh, it's going to give you a view of the igniter. It's kind of hard to show on the camera, but you should be able to see the tip of the igniter. And after you do the startup sequence, you just want to sit here and watch if you're able to access this window and look for the blue spark in between the igniter and the burner. And just like that. And we are good to go. So I wasn't able to uh, get the video of me putting the furnace back in. But as you can hear now, it's running great. And uh, there is heat blowing out. Uh, it's actually been running for a solid like three weeks at least um, since I've got the time to edit and post this video and everything's going great. So don't forget I'm going to drop a couple links down below uh, for you to see some of the other guys that are doing these videos that are a lot more knowledgeable and
can use a lot better technical terms than I can. And also the, the links for the parts that I use are going to be in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. That way I can, I can afford Balthazar's dog food. And I'll catch you in the next video. Ginger Hotshot, out.